Hello, hello everyone. This is Dominic here at Action Now, uh, bringing you the second instalment of the Top 5 Commons and Uncommons for Limited series. Uh, we've already had Cal Time, and today we're going to be tackling Strixhaven. So I'll start, as always, with my disclaimers. Just like last time, this list is just my opinion. There were actually quite a lot of cards in this set that I thought looked pretty good for Limited, so cutting this list down to a top 5 was quite difficult, and I may have not included some cards that you might think are very, very strong. I'm only going to be judging commons and uncommons as normal, not going to be judging rares, mythics, or mystical archives. Just the bread and butter of Limited that you will open a lot of, and you will encounter more often than perhaps some of the rares or mythics. And something just to keep an eye out for, uh, watch out for the Action Now mini pre-release that may be happening at some point in the future, and you will get a chance to see some of these cards in action in Games of Limited for yourself. And you can see how right, or maybe even wrong, I was with this list. Anyway, starting out with number 5, we have Kelpie Guide. Now, at first glance, this might seem like a pretty mediocre 3-drop, but looks can be deceiving. Let's break it down. The first ability has a lot of uses. You can use it to ramp, to untap your lands to give yourself more mana, to cast bigger spells ahead of time. You can even use it to fix your colours. If you only drew one mountain, for example, you can tap, untap, and tap it to get two, two red out of it. You can untap your creatures after they've attacked, giving them a sort of vigilance, maybe surprise your opponent with a blocker they weren't expecting. And there's more uses. You could even untap other creatures with tap abilities to use them a second time. And if you get to the late game, this card gains the ability to tap down any threat your opponent might play. You can even, if you're feeling really mean, tap one of their lands, maybe to lock them out of a colour if they're unlucky enough to only draw one forest, for example. The main downside with this card, it is only a 2-2 two, two for 3. And there's quite a lot of removal in the set, so this is relatively easy for your opponent to get rid of. Coming in at number 4, we have Returned Past Caller. This is pretty solid. It's a dangerous 4 power flyer. It can threaten a lot of damage quite quickly in the air. If your opponent doesn't manage to block this, it will kill them pretty quickly. And it gives you value straight away by returning a spell or even a spirit to your hand when you play it. Now you might think, but hang on, this seems a little bit overcosted. This costs 6 mana after all. But sealed is slow and grindy. Sealed is all about value. The player who can get the most 2 for 1s is likely to win. It's very rare that someone will have a sealed deck that is able to kill you quickly, consistently. So chances are you want cards like this that can give you lots of value in the late game to beat your opponent when you get there. And this is perfect. It's a big flyer, it's a threat, and it gives you value. And if you open two of them, you can even use one of them to get back the other one and do some pretty silly loops with it. The only downside is... There are a lot of inkling tokens in the set, which are 2-1 flyers, which do trade with this, which does feel a little bit bad, but you'll still get your value. At number 3, we have Frost Trickster. This is what you get if you combine a Frost Lynx and a Windrake. This is so much better than it looks. The ability to tap down a creature is extremely strong in any racing situation, where you're both just playing creatures and turning them sideways every turn, pretty much. Not only does this card lock down an opponent's creature for a turn, it's also got flying, so it can stay relevant afterwards. It chips in for damage in the air, and it can stay back to block your opponent's flyers if you're on the defensive. And if you're on the offensive, this card is even better, as it can stop one of your opponent's creatures blocking for two attack steps, the turn you play it and the turn afterwards. The only downside to this card, they didn't call it Frost Drake. That's a missed opportunity, in my opinion. And coming in at number two, we have Mortality Spear, perhaps one of the best limited removal spells we've seen in a while. For 4 mana, instant speed, you answer anything, no questions, oh, well okay, not anything, it can't answer a land, but anything threatening that your opponent can play is gone. Maybe even that Professor Onyx your opponent was lucky enough to open, it's still gone, and it can deal with a creature just fine too. I would play this card, and I would think this card was very good, even if it didn't have that first line of text. If it was just 4 mana instant destroy something, I would still be very happy. But the fact that sometimes it can even cost 2 mana makes it even better. 
The only downside I can see for this card is it is a format about value and it's only a one for one, but you really can't ask for much more from your removal spells. And before we go on to the top spot, I just wanted to mention a couple of honourable mentions that nearly made the list. Uh, first up is Zimone, Quandrix Prodigy. Again, sealed is based around value. This card gives you a ton of value. It's a two drop that is still relevant if you draw it later. The first ability helps you ramp in the early game and the second ability helps you run away with the game later, especially if you get to eight lands. The main reason this didn't make the list is in the mid game, this card is a little bit mediocre. If you're maybe stuck on three or four lands, you can't really use the second ability without skipping your whole turn and it's not that good in combat as only a one two. That's the main reason I didn't make the list. If you do open lots of cards like this in your limited pool, I would highly recommend playing 18 lands so that you get the opportunity to make use of them. And there are other mechanics like learn in the set that also encourage a high land count. My second honorable mention would be the five campus lands. Crucial fixing in a set based around multicolor archetypes. And you're never going to be able to play five color nonsense unless you have plenty of these. Even though the multicolor archetypes are only two colors, there are a lot of cards with intensive mana costs. For example, there are cards that cost two of one color and two of another color. So it really helps to have these fixing lands to make sure you can cast your spells on time, even in a two color deck. And the ability to scry late game is a lot better than it looks. The ability perhaps when you're both top decking to bottom a land or two will win you the game if your opponent isn't able to scry. The main downside, they're really not that exciting to play, but they're a lot better than they look. And finally, the number one slot for Strixhaven Limited, in my opinion, is Igneous Inspiration. In my opinion, this card reads three mana sorcery, deal three damage to any target and draw a card, which is incredible. I am of the belief that Learn is incredibly powerful in Sealed. Knowing exactly what you're going to draw, since you know what sort of lessons you have in your sideboard, I would argue almost makes this better than drawing a normal card, assuming you've opened the lessons in your pool. Do you need a land or some colour fixing? Go and fetch environmental sciences. Do you need some removal? Introduction to Annihilation has you covered. Do you need a creature? There's several possible options in all of the different colours that can give you a creature token. Did you get very lucky with your mythics? Go and grab Mascot Exhibition and crush your opponent with multiple tokens at the same time. The main downside I can see to this card is if you are unlucky and you don't open a single playable lesson, which I think is relatively unlikely, the card becomes 3 mana, 3 damage and the option to loot, which is still a very good card, but perhaps not as good as being able to draw a specific card. Anyway, that's my opinion. Now it's over to you guys. What do you think I got right? What do you think I got wrong? Do you think there are any colleges that perhaps got more than their fair share of the good cards? What's your opinion on the learn mechanic? Do you think it's as busted as I think it is in Limited? I would love to hear your thoughts.